how you going? It's Dr. David Johnson here, coming to you from the uh, Functional Movement Training Centre. Now, you're probably watching this video because I uh, may have advised you on your uh, back pain symptoms, and I've probably talked to you uh, in our consultations um, about the structural elements of your spine and um, uh, reassured you that there's no requirements for any surgical intervention but that doesn't help you to get over your pain and disability and what I've probably uh, explained to you is that there are significant functional um, deficiencies relating to your, um, your spine health and if the functional deficits are the main problem that's causing your pain then obviously the most effective intervention that we need to deliver is a functional intervention and therefore um, when we refer to a functional intervention we're talking about the, the um, ability of your spine to move proficiently and hence I'd probably refer you to a, uh, a program called Neurohab which is delivered by the Functional Movement Training Centre and it's a movement therapy program it's, it's a skill acquisition program it's not an exercise program, it's not a strength building program, it's a skill acquisition program. And the development of skill is one of the uh, primary uh, characteristics that define a functional intervention is that we are making you more skillful. So that's a really important point. And if you think about all the other interventions that you may have received for your back pain, think about whether they actually made you more skillful or not and the answer will most commonly be no they haven't made you more skillful because there's no way that taking tablets or doing some stretching or doing some core strength um, or receiving some tablets or an injection makes you more skillful it's purely a symptom based intervention not a functional intervention so one of the most common questions that people ask me when so I've had that consultation with them and while they're waiting to start their Neurohab movement therapy program is what should I do over the next two weeks or however long it's going to take me to get into the program. Sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's two weeks, sometimes it's three weeks or sometimes there may be delays that are preventing you from starting the program straight away. And the most common question is what should I do now? Um, and the answer to that is really simple. Um, number one, watch the content on Functional Movement Training Centre, either on the website or on the Facebook page, um, where we can upload lots of content. But this is designed to be a very short video to give you a little bit of understanding of uh, the skill requirement that you can practice from day one. And really what it boils down to is understanding the neutral spine position. So I've got my trusty broomstick here. And what I want to demonstrate to you what, what I mean by neutral spine. When I talk about neutral spine, I don't mean that you have to have a vertical spine. In fact, it's actually more helpful for you to maintain a neutral spine in non-vertical positions, okay? So my spine is still in a neutral position there. It's in a very powerful, safe, and unstressed, biomechanically unstressed position when I move my spine with neutral positions. Notice what's happening with my hip. My hip is doing all the rotation, not my lumbar spine, because if I bend my lumbar spine, I'm doing this. I'm moving away from the broomstick. If I do a correct, proficiently correct movement, my hips are moving back, I'm engaging my posterior chain, I'm keeping my spine neutral and safe and slowly building health into all of the spinal joints. It doesn't matter whether it's L5S1 or L12 or L34. Um, and so let's look at that movement when we're doing a simple task such as picking up picking up a drink bottle okay so if I have a drink bottle here and it's on the coffee table at home there's my drink bottle and I've just got to tidy up the uh, the lounge room I'm going to come towards this drink bottle I'm going to do exactly the same thing I'm going to pick up the drink bottle and I'm going to go and do that simple task again very light task here's a pair of glasses I'm putting it down on the coffee table. I'm picking it up off the coffee table. Okay. Another simple task is of just simply sitting down on a chair or on a bench. Okay. I'm maintaining that position. And let's demonstrate that very, very simply with the broomstick. Here I am sitting there, bending forward to pick up my glasses. 
bending forward to pick up my glasses. Bending forward to put something onto a table. Okay, there's my neutral position. And then here I am sitting in the chair, sitting down correctly, standing up correctly. Okay, now if you even try those at home, you'll probably find it a little bit clumsy, but that's where the program will refine your technique and make it so automatic for you that you don't even have to think about it. Now, one of the profound little uh, bits of information here is that those biomechanical movements that we're using for the most simple tasks, tasks that we would bend our body for roughly 5,000 times a day, also apply to doing extremely physically challenging tasks. So here's, here's a barbell with 100 kilos on it. That's approximately five cement bags, okay? Five cement bags. Now look at my body biomechanics when I pick up this barbell. When I do the same barbell movement, Okay, there's 100 kilograms lifted, and notice the position of my spine when I did that movement. I wish I could do it with one hand, but I can't. Um, but it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same when I do a barbell movement with 100 kilograms. Okay, we're going to take that very safe movement, and we're going to do exactly the same when I pick up my sunglasses off a coffee table, when I bend over to pat the dog on the head, when I bend over to open up the cupboard, when I bend over to empty the dishwasher, okay? I'm doing those same movements. So that is the essence of functional movement proficiency that allows your inflamed, irritable, injured spine, whether it be a facet joint, whether it be a disc, whether it be a tendon or a ligament, that is the biomechanical um, fundamental that allows those structures to heal. So let's have a look at that again for a deadlift. There's my position and then we lift it up. Okay, so that's it. And also squatting. So say you've got to do something, say I've got to pick up this little, say my, my bottle is on the ground. I can't actually do that very proficient. I just can't quite reach that bottle on the ground. Because if I try to reach that bottle now, I, my hamstrings have locked me out, so I can't get any further. What I'm going to do, if I continue to try to pick up the bottle, I'll actually lose my neutral position, because now I have to start to bend forward and lose my neutral position. To do, so I'm not going to do that. So for, some, for most of our patients, we would recommend that you do what's called the knight's pose. Come down onto one knee, maintaining that neutral position, and then bending forward to pick it up, okay? As you progress, and I'll just demonstrate that with the broomstick again, you're still not breaking the rules of movement, okay? And there are rules of movement. Just like there are rules of driving a car safely on the road, there are rules of moving well. And this is what the program is going to teach you. Neurohab is going to teach you the rules of moving well. As you get more and more proficient, and as your tissues get healthier, you'll then be able to move into something called a squat. Okay, so now I can do a squat and pick things up and I still won't be breaking the rules of movement because I've got nice healthy tissues and I've got a nice healthy spine because I've moved well all the time and now I can maintain that position all the time and do my squat. So let's demonstrate that squat movement when we're doing something very physically demanding. And so if I was doing something really heavy, I would still want to maintain the same physical, it's even more important for me to maintain this, those biomechanical healthy movement patterns. And so just say I was picking up 60 kilograms now. Okay, so there's my 60 kilograms. And I'm gonna do a squat. And so you can see there that to do the squat, requires good biomechanical proficiency. If that's biomechanically proficient to do physically demanding activity, then we're going to use the same principle to do a simple activity of picking up your glasses. And in the big scheme of things, in the big scheme of things, trivial movements in your day have a far greater impact on your spine health than the occasional physical demanding movement. 
So if you want to get bang for your buck in your uh, actual rehabilitation, you've got to focus on those trivial movements. Okay. So I hope that does make sense to you and um, allows you to think about uh, what you're going to do and how you're going to move in that small window uh, whilst you're waiting to start the uh, only movement therapy program, the only specific dedicated and distinctive movement therapy program in Australia. Uh, and it's delivered by the Function Movement Training Centre and it's called Neurohealth. All the best. Thanks for watching. Thank you.